Hey guys and gals, it is uh, time for episode three of uh, the design and build of this system here. And uh, things are working out different than I planned, but in some ways really better. I've got a lot done. Uh, one thing I did, I got the float valve installed, I got the line installed. Remember I said I was going to use this big hole, I'm just going to fix that hole. It just made a lot more sense to put a penetration right there. Uh, haven't tested this yet. Got a bulkhead in the bottom so it'll completely drain out. Right now I'm out of half inch valves and I'm not leaving the house during a pandemic to get a valve. I got a bunch of stuff coming, but uh, just threw an end cap on there. This is all dry fit right now. Um, I'll get it all glued up and uh, tested probably tomorrow or coming week. We're about to have uh, some pretty nasty weather, so I'm, I'm just getting ready to pack it in for the day and thought I would give you guys an update where I'm at and what I've got done the past couple days. Again, we just, nice hole down there. And the reason we have that end cap there is, um, again, when I get a valve, I'll put a valve on that. And in the winter time, since this is outside unprotected and can freeze up and blow pipes, we'll just close that interior valve, I'll show you in a second, open this valve and just drain out whatever's left over. And we got no problems there. Um, as you can see, like I said, let me, uh, let me catch you up on this and I can shut that off so there's less noise. Um, as you see right here, these, these four inch cups are pretty deep and the water level's now risen up enough to just touch the bottom if I take that lower valve and I just barely impede the, the exhaust. This has been running for like 20 minutes and these are 15 minute cycles so it's not going to overrun. And if I open that valve all the way, what we end up with is the water level is just, I mean, like that off the bottom, which is kind of perfect. So it's really like more ebb and flow now than it really is like a deep water. It's, it's pretty cool. And when you, when you drop it, you end up with the water level down to here. So you get a pretty big air gap for all those roots in there. Let me kick this pump off. All right. There'll still be sounds, but less loud sounds the way this is working out I'm thinking this pump might run 15 minutes four times a day once those roots are down and into there I mean basically it's a crack key deep water system call it what you want to at that point but just having that flow of 15 minutes four or five times a day man I, I don't know that you need any more than that I mean we know crack key and a float valve will work uh, so this is kind of like crack key but it, it refreshes itself you know a few times a day and I, I'm really happy with it. I, I did put that float valve, as much adjustment as it had, I didn't want to go too low with it, which is kind of stupid because you can adjust it way up. Uh, I probably could have put it maybe an inch lower where I put that bulkhead through. All I did, if you look down there, you see there's a little piece of foam on it, just to make sure that it, it's short up. I, put, I slipped a little piece of uh, foam insulation over it to kind of give it a little more push, especially when it's all that water's being disturbed down there. Little. Because what I'm worried about is if that doesn't cut off low at, at a high enough or low enough level, you could end up getting so much fluid in here that when the cycle stops, you could overflow it. And I don't want to do that. I don't think there's any danger of that now. We got that working out uh, just about perfect. If it ends up being a problem, I can always take that valve out of that bulkhead, put a thread adapter in there, and put a, like a 45 angle and bring it down a little lower. But I just don't see it being necessary. Um, I know it might be crazy, but I want to let that bottom level be way low because there is a lot of rise and fall in here because of how much rise and fall there is in these buckets. If you look right there, that level has dropped significantly and it's still running. Um, that amount of ebb and flow will decrease once we got roots down into the main water level because then I can just go ahead and open that valve all the way. And like I said, when you do that, the way it's set right now, you end up, you know, uh, a quarter inch from the bottom. It almost, it basically, that one right there, it barely touches the bottom and kind of almost, and then a little gap, and your biggest gap's down here. And there's no, no surprise as to why that is. These two buckets are closest to the overflow, so they don't fill, even though they're level buckets, they don't quite fill just as high. But right where I got that valve now, boy, it's, it's just perfect. I really couldn't be happier with the way this is working out. I do have a tip for some of y'all. Remember, I used these head sprinklers to deliver the water because instead of having to have individual valves, if you have too much flow out of one of these head sprinklers, you can just turn a little screw on it and you can back down the power. So it's like 65 cents to not only have spray, 
but also to have a valve. I'd say it's more like a dollar because you're going to need a slip and thread adapter to go with them for them to screw onto. Um, but cheap. If I was building this and I was buying those, these are all 360s. That means they spray 300, most of them are anyway, they spray 360 degrees. I would buy a 90 degree. They don't cost anymore. And I'd point the 90 at that cup. And I mean, then you could drop your level way down. You basically got aeroponics for a dollar a head. Uh, there's a lot of things. I'm, that's why I do these things. I learn so much when I take a project like this instead of doing somebody else's project that's already been done. And I build something right from scratch based on what I've picked up. It's not, you know, it's not always the case that I end up with a better system. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But what I learn in doing it, and that's what I want to encourage you all to do. Get out and build stuff, and don't just try to make it exactly like mine. You know, unless you really like it and you want then go ahead. But be, be okay with trying different things. Just have kind of fallback plans. That's one of the big things I do. So you don't have to spend a lot of money that you don't need to spend. So that's that. And... Uh, I was going to get all the stuff mixed this weekend and get my plants in. It's going to be like 38 degrees on, I think, Wednesday morning. And that's not enough to kill plants. It is enough to kind of knock them back, though. And remember, even though this is a greenhouse, since I'm rehabbing it, it ain't that such clear plastic. It's, ah, look, it's, it's missing. It's gone. I took it down. So new, new covering is going to go up on this soon. So... Right now, I'll get zero protection if I put the plants in here. So I think I might just leave them in the indoor system and plant them like Thursday. Uh, that just seems like a smarter thing to do. I also got started on this. Uh, turned out the 4-inch end caps that I ordered when I ordered these pipes were for like storm drain. So they don't fit on these. So now I had to order six end caps for these. And boy... If I didn't already have myself in this position, I might think of a different way to do this because those things are freaking expensive. Um, I mean, elbows might cost less, and if you just put an elbow on, if I had already, you know, if I had planned for it and left space or whatever, I just didn't feel like redoing it. Um, I guess I could have cut it off or whatever. But you know, if you stand an elbow up like that, I think the elbow costs less than a damn M cap, and and that's gonna. You know, but then you still need some way to get out. So I found end caps that are flat, which is what I wanted. So I can put a bulkhead in. I can set my level with a bulkhead and a stand-up pipe in each one of these. I got one more of these pipes to install, and it'll be up about right here. Um, they're going to have a lot of vertical growth room here. I'm actually going to have more here. I'm going to go a little bit higher with the next pipe instead of just trying to make them even for my pattern recognition. Uh, you know, maybe the top of the next one's about right there. Because the top pipe's going to be strawberries. So we're going to have strawberries and fennel, basil, something like that. Uh, but these will be more greens. That's going to be strawberries up there. If strawberries do really good, um, it might end up being strawberry, strawberry, fennel or something like that. Or strawberry, strawberry, fennel. I don't know. Uh, if strawberries do really good, there might be a redesign because I don't need anywhere near this much space for strawberries. Because strawberries are going to grow up and, and kind of, you know, drop down um there might be a fourth pipe going in if strawberries do really well because boy my grandkids are going to put me in the poorhouse eating strawberries uh so that's coming next now i know what y'all are thinking because it's what a lot of people have pointed this out said hey you know greenhouse texas summer you know these pipes are going to get really hot that sump not being buried is going to get really hot i'm ahead of you first of all the sump here is going to go over in this corner it's going to be mostly in the ground as much as i can put it in the ground anyway here with all the rock that we have and it's going to be behind that wall for shade. Back here, we'll do some other things to keep that out of the sun. But yeah, those pipes, especially this pipe and the next pipe, they're going to get hit with sun. Well, sitting in a box, I've got a piece custom cut to fit exactly over the top and down to here of this greenhouse, 40% shade cloth, grommets and all. So all I got to do, once it gets hot, I just go up on a ladder back there and just roll it like a cigarette, boom down and attach it and I've got 40% shade on everything for the whole summer and I think that in Texas you're going to get more use out of a shade area than a greenhouse now it doesn't mean the greenhouse won't be useful because let's turn this around let's go to winter time winter time we've got the new covering it's a much better it's a it's a very heavy duty film uh, it's like a seven year reinforced film that's going to go on here we've got all the gaps filled in everything's good we've got a good tight greenhouse that gets nice and warm we'll put in some of the automatic vents so that if it gets too warm 
it can open up. Okay, so we got that so it won't get too hot. We take this sump right here, we throw a, um, just a simple uh, aquarium heater in the sump for this one, plus we have solar gain here. We keep that water at about 65, 70 degrees. Not hard to do in this climate at all. What happens then is that heat carries over in the greenhouse overnight. Um, we probably, you know, what we'll do is we'll just grow tomatoes back here until we get to the time of year where maybe they can't handle it in here anymore. It's time to, to start over. We we'll go a few months without them and be because like this year I'd already have them going right if this was already built. So we have a few months a year without tomatoes in here during the coldest part of the year. We probably just won't run this. Um, now maybe we'll do something with it. I, I don't know. I mean I'm getting to the point where unless I start selling food, more food is not a problem. Like I just I don't need any more food. I'll be growing food for the damn ducks and the dogs soon. Uh, now adding some other stuff in though. You see that little. Rubbermaid tote, those little four gallon square ones. I have four of those that I already played with for Kratky. They have six net cups in them. I'm thinking I'll put a shelf here and a shelf here, and then we'll just have four Kratky, true Kratky little totes that can be dumped out whenever you want to. By the way, you could refill them right off of this system, you know, or you could refill them off of this system, depending on what fertility you want. Just I could hook up a little hose bib on either one of them in a hose and just go ahead and refill, and that way I only have to fill my sumps. So, that's where we're at. Oh yeah, I want to show you this. I, I hung these up with, with plumbing strap and I was a little worried trying to hold this huge pipe with plumbing strap that we might end up with some movement or some slip and you know there's a significant amount of weight in a, in a, in a you know three-quarter full four-inch pipe. I found these little uh, shelf brackets so I, I have four of those so I, I just popped them in. I already had them for extra support and then the plumbing strap holding it. Down here I just cleated together some two by fours and uh, the reason I did that is I have two more of these and again I'm not leaving during the pan pandemic to buy a damn shelf and I probably wouldn't buy those are a little bit expensive since they're scrap it doesn't matter they were they've been here since I moved into place uh, so the, the guy that looked, bought the house from he paid for them so I don't really care um, the reason I didn't do just some trap scrap cleats like this for this pipe is I really think you need two one's a little higher than the other it really works great but then you're coming down three and a half inches, you're taking away your vertical grow space here. So I just thought, why not go ahead and use these? So I'll put, put the other two in. Um, and uh, once that's done, man, I've just got to get the end caps on and the sump installed. And I have two brand new systems. Um, I can start working on this soon. I might have to start working on this soon because I'm there's things I'm waiting on to come now. And I'm a big believer if you, uh, if you can't work because you're out of stuff, then we'll do the other thing until the stuff comes. Oh, I wanted to show you this too. Um, I'll put a link in the video notes. This is part of a very cheap hole saw set. And this thing's a piece of junk. And it's the best piece of crap I've ever owned in my life, honestly. Watch this. See how that wobbles? I mean, this thing, it, it, what it is too is the mandrel is, is not straight. Now, I, I would think that no matter what kind of cheap Chinese garbage you're talking about, Making a straight drill bit and a straight mandrel, look at that wobble. It'll wobble, wobble. All right. So making a straight drill bit would be something that you would think anybody with a basic machine shop could do. Um, they're not the best. But they're like under 20 bucks, and they come with everything from little bitty ones all the way up to a 5. This is a 4-inch. comes up to a 5-inch. And, you know, between like 1 and 3 inches, there's like every size you could ever need. And you know what? We're cutting like PVC pipe and plastic, they work. And if you've ever looked at a regular, like a good hole saw set, and I have some good hole saws, they're expensive. Now, if I was a contractor and I was using these things on a daily basis, putting in doors and doing other things you do with hole saws and pipe penetrations, I would not rely on this. I would spend the money and get something, you know, like minimum like a cobalt, better like a DeWalt set or something like that. But for a hobbyist, for a hobbyist cutting plastic that you know you're going to cut seven buckets and you might not use that one again for a year, um, yeah, it stinks of machine oil when you take it out. Yeah, it wobbles a little bit. It doesn't matter. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that hole right there at all. It works perfectly. So I'll put a link to those. I, I, I bought that thing like a year ago, and I cursed it when I realized what a piece of junk it was. And I've used it so much since I bought it that... I've decided it's a very useful, cheap piece of junk that works perfectly 
uh, for what it does. I've, uh, every single hole, even the one in the wall back there, that I've done for this project was made with that hole saw kit. You really want to, if, if you're going to be doing this stuff and you don't want to spend, you know, a couple hundred bucks on a few different hole saw sizes, and then you're like, oh crap, now I need one that's one and seven eighths or whatever, just get this piece of junk, and then if you want to do a lot of work with a specific size, you can get a better one for that. Um, here's this thing right here. I'll show it to you. And I'll show you the other stuff we got done. It's right here. It's uh, AJ Wholesale 16-piece kit, you know. And uh, it actually works really good for what it is. You can see it's all covered in stuff because I've been using it. Um, here's my tomatoes. These are only like two and a half weeks old. And they are huge already. What I did today, they're huge! What I did today, I took the, uh, the lights they were hanging from these clips and I popped them out on this flood tray and I put them up on top of the rack to give them another couple inches to grow um, because I don't want to plant them today. I want to, I want to hold off on planting them until, uh, again, Thursday so we can get past that cold weather. Um, the other thing I got done since the last time we checked in with each other is I built two more of these boxes to, uh, to facade in uh, these... Uh, uh, wicking beds and I learned some so once I built one I got my measurements for my top rails and my bottom rails and uh, I think they're 49 and 53 inches so I just had my chop saw set up there and cut my boards and I had my wife come out and help hold stuff for me and boy we couldn't get it to fit you see what I did I took a reciprocating saw and I, I cut these corners off these corners are different on these things these are uh from things that held molasses for cattle. And you can see this one has a nice cope in it. A nice, like about, I'd say it's, you know, right on like a 50 degree radius, just a little more, a little less than 45. Um, just nice, right? These, these were, I'll show you, the one over here is the same way. They're squared. And that means that even though they're the same distance here to here, this corner juts out further so uh, now that I know that instead of cutting this one I, what I'll probably do is just make my rails like an inch and a half longer each and you can see right here what I'm talking about you got that nice radius and you got a big old block so I mean these aren't precision things if you ever find these on some old farmer or something wants to get rid of them I'm telling you they are a hell of a great uh, utility these were I got these for 30 bucks a piece I got 10 of them um, a friend of mine got, no, I got eight of them. A friend of mine got like 40 of them and he was happy. He was, you know, good enough to pass them on to me at cost. Plus I gave him some money for driving up here, but that's where we're at. And, uh, we'll catch up with you soon. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, just accept the fact that it's about to rain and get nasty and I'm going to mix a drink and sit on the porch. And as I keep saying, there's parts of this pandemic. I just, uh, I refuse to, to participate in. We'll catch you later.